In this video I will show you the most insane endgame farms that players have built in Minecraft. Some of these farms are truly on another level so get ready to be amazed. The first one we will take a look at is called End of Light. It's the fastest all mob farm in Minecraft and was designed by Hammer SMP player Pekatek, Victor40 and Aima MC. The farm can produce up to 6.5 million items per hour. Yep, you heard it right, 6.5 million. The key factors of the farm are light and update suppression. Using suppressed light allows you to have the portal light level at zero, which means that the portals won't emit any light and make it possible for the mobs to spawn. If you wanna know how the light suppression exactly works, then check out Wikitech's video where he explains all of that. It can also be used to light up your builds without using any light sources, and it looks like this. And with the update suppression, you are able to break the obsidian blocks without breaking the portal inside. This allows for the portals to be sliced like a cake, making the farm a lot more efficient and compact. Another interesting thing is the bat switch that is needed for this farm, since it spawns so many bats that they will just all fly around and eventually will crash the cave. There is a lot more interesting stuff that goes into building such a farm and if you wanna know more about this project, a link to the original creators will be down below in the description. Next up, let's take a look at the dragon slayer that can one hit an ender dragon and instantly kill him. This one is designed by Fallen Breath and he's as insane as it sounds. The basics of how the farm works is pretty easy actually. You shoot an arrow, the redstone system aligns the arrow and spawns a TNT. The TNT explodes, shooting the arrow down at an insane speed and killing the dragon with just one hit. The faster the arrow is, the more damage it does and there are 12 TNT duping modules in this build providing you 240 TNTs in each shot. So the arrow is moving pretty fast. I will quickly show you how to use this machine since it's that simple. First place down the tree and crystals as usual and use a piston to push the fourth one into place like this. Then go up into the machine and shoot an arrow right here. Now open this trap door and place down the fifth crystal. This will activate the farm as well as the dragon respawning cycle. And now just wait and enjoy the show. 3, 2, 1 and boom the dragon is dead and all it took was just one arrow and a pretty complex redstone cannon. If you wanna know more about this machine or download the world, then make sure to check out Fallen Breath's video down below. Next up we have a super fast spruce tree farm by Floppy Donkini. This one produces over 460,000 logs per hour. It uses a piston system to push the logs and remove the leaves once the tree has grown. After that the logs are transported into the blast chambers where the TNT tubers will blow them up. There are 10 different TNT explosion chambers to make sure that all the logs are destroyed. After building the farm, you will probably never cut down another tree with your own axe. The rates are just so good. A video with more information and a word download can be found in the description below. But now onto something even bigger and more insane. And that's the Voidcraft SMP gold farm. It uses the same slice portals as the EOL mob farm and produces about 1.65 million items per hour. I decided to include this one as well, since in addition to the good rates, it also looks really awesome. The main part of the farm is the nether, where a huge perimeter is dug out to maximize the zombified piglin rates. And in the middle, there are the slice portals, teleporting instantly all the piglins into the overworld, where they are killed. One of the reasons why this farm is so effective is that it uses a TNT looting system, which basically means that the TNT has looting tree effect and when blowing up the mobs, it gives us a lot more items. The amount of XP this farm produces is more than a Minecraft player can even absorb. So instead of trying to collect it, the XP just flows into the fire and gets destroyed. A bit of overkill farm, but still super awesome in my opinion. It definitely shows that it's possible to get much more than just a hundred thousand items per hour like most regular gold farms. Moving into the end, we have the cubic meters obsidian farm that produces around 240,000 obsidian per hour. It uses 40 wither cages to destroy the obsidian pillars generated when spawning a new dragon. 
when the obsidian pillar gets blown up, the respawn ritual is cancelled by pushing the end crystal away from the middle structure. After that, a new ritual starts and the obsidian pillar regenerates. It's a super cool technique and a lot better than farming the spawn platform, since with this method you can easily enter the end without messing up the farm and killing yourself accidentally. All you have to do to start this farm is flick this lever, go in here and hold down your right click with crystals in hand and the farm starts to work. He even has a 600,000 version of this farm, so if you need a lot of obsidian, make sure to check out his video. Moving on, we have a single dimension wither skeleton farm called Viske Pro and is designed by four really talented players. It's really a work of art that produces 1800 wither skulls per hour and can be switched between only being a wither skull farm to also being a fortress mob farm. The clock period of this farm can be easily changed between a lag friendly farm and being as efficient as possible. With this farm everything has been thought through, so I could keep on talking about this for a long time. So if you want to know everything, make sure to check out the original creator's video. He explains everything over there and also has a word download. Let's take a look at this Guardian XP farm now, designed by enx 4 You might think that, well, that's not insane, but let me explain. This is a Guardian XP farm that produces around 180,000 XP per hour, about the exact amount that the player can absorb. So it's perfect, there is no lag when AFKing for hours, and you will get as much XP as possible when using the farm. The design is also super simple, just some bubble columns, portals and you're done. I would say that it's a must have farm even in the end game to quickly get some XP and by some I mean the maximum amount possible. EANXO4 also has a build tutorial on it on his channel so if you're interested check it out below. Now this is something a bit more advanced, a stacking raid farm by Kaoging. This farm produces around 380,000 items per hour and 200,000 of them are emeralds. Stacking raid farms are relatively new things in Minecraft. They work by shifting the raid center at least 96 blocks away from the player, allowing the player to hit the villager captain and quickly get a new bad omen and start a new raid. This means you are stacking the raids. The farm itself looks super cool when activated. There are 12 sorters and shulker box fillers in the collection area. Since this farm is so fast, it needs a massive collection area. Also a small nether side that kills the ravengers and some vex traps next to the farm to get rid of those. We have built this farm once and I would say the hardest part of building is the sorting and filling systems. They are quite compact and it takes a bit more time to understand them. But other than that, it's a super useful farm and I definitely recommend that you build one. Next up, let's take a look at a food farm that this user's friend built. A hoglin farm that produces over a million items per hour. It uses the same slice portal technique that we have taken a look at before. And it's crazy how small but efficient this farm is. And apparently a version 2.0 is on the way. Those damn suppressed portals, they are so OP. Let's talk about iron farms now. We ourselves have built a pretty big one in our server and also made a video about it. The thing with iron farms is that villagers are only able to spawn golems once every 35 seconds. So a single cell iron farm can produce around 400 iron per hour maximum. The easiest way to scale up your iron farms is to just build more cells and with more villagers. But our farm doesn't even come close to what other players have done. For example, this iron farm that Reddit user Elias Portid produces around 100,000 iron per hour, and I'm sure there are even bigger iron farms that we don't know about. I hope this gives you a bit of inspiration and you learned something new. But thanks for watching. See ya!